I'm going to give you some tips for post lab 42, a Wittig reaction of transcinnamaldehyde. You're going to begin by reporting the masses of both of your reactants, the mass of your product, and the melting point of your product. You're then going to move on to calculating the yield. You're going to take the mass of your transcinnamaldehyde and convert it into millimoles, and you'll do the same for your benzyl triphenylphosphonium chloride. Both of these are the reactants that you used in this equation. Once you have both of those millimoles calculated, you're then going to determine the limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is just the one that you have the least of, so you'll just compare these two millimoles and decide which one you have the least of just by comparing the numbers. It is possible that maybe you have the exact same number of millimoles for both of these, in which case there is no limiting reactant or they're both limiting reactants, however you want to phrase it. Um, you could just you know note something along those lines in this space if you do end up in that weird situation. Once you decide the limiting reactant, you're then going to predict the theoretical millimole of product. If you take a look on page 345, down at the very bottom of the page, that's going to give you the balanced equation for this reaction. So that will help you decide the theoretical millimoles of your product. Let's just say that you decided that your limiting reactant was the transcinnamaldehyde. You would use the transcinnamaldehyde then to calculate the theoretical millimoles of your product. The, the uh, theoretical mass of your product can be calculated even if you don't know the identity of the product because the possible products in this reaction, they all have the same molecular weight. So you'll be calculating, uh, converting your theoretical millimole into your theoretical mass. The molecular weights are in table 42.1, which is on page 346. And then of course, calculate your percent yield. Question number three, you're going to draw the structure in, of the product and give its IUPAC name. You're going to um, base the identity of the structure off of, its mel or off of the product. Um, you're going to base the identity of the product off of its melting point, which is also in table 42.1. There are two possible products for this reaction. There's an EE product and there's an EZ product. They have very different um, melting points, so you should have no problem telling them apart. The IUPAC name is the name that is in table 42.1, so you don't have to look up the IUPAC name, just copy that name from the table. You will analyze your purity based on the melting point and then answer um, problem 2b. On page 347, problem 2B is saying, hey, we did not even bother considering the possibility that the ZZ isomer was made. Why, why is that not even a reasonable possible product? And I think it's going to be easier for you to answer this question if you draw out the structure of the ZZ isomer. And when you look at the structure of the ZZ isomer, I think that that's going to make you understand um, why this product is, is not reasonable for this reaction.